<laughs> called Joe and Jacob talk about backsplashes. Double J. Black Lou, I saw you flash that fucking Cowboys mug. No, new, new quarantine third mic. Becky Rodriguez joining us. And Becky's cat. We're getting the feline. Get the cat in here. Put a mic to it. Black Lou, um, I'm I'm kind of out of the loop in sports, but still in the loop in sports. I heard that Dak turned down a major contract with the Cowboys. Is that true? Yeah, he wants a four-year deal, but they keep offering him a five-year deal. Basically, there's going to be some sort of like new TV contracts coming out with the. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I bet there's going to be a new TV contract when it's going to only be TV. Yeah, where well, you can't go see it. Well, dude, they uh, they said the 49ers were going to play in Arizona because Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, was like, yeah, I don't think so. And even the town of Santa Clara or the city of Santa Clara was like nothing over a thousand people uh, until November. And so, so funny. It's like, the, the numbers are so arbitrary. Yeah, it could change. Well, it's, you know, what, you know what I'm saying? The numbers are just so arbitrary. There's nothing over a thousand people. It could spread through. Uh, five people, which is a five-person hat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's the either like, well, either say well, go be safe and get out there, or fucking we're staying in until there's a fucking legit vaccine. Also, we don't even know because stuff keeps changing. Like, you know, to lift the curtain a little bit, Sirius said we might not be able to get back into the studio until September at the least. Yeah, and that's crazy. Well, Jacob said there was crazy. some sort of a meeting coming where they're going to figure that. Maybe it's like maybe they're going to say a little bit earlier now, but. Yeah, well, Katie I don't know. has I think a meeting at work, that. so yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, you hear. Yeah, what were you going to say? I think sooner than that, we could probably organize some sort of a thing to like be in the same room a couple days a week or something. Maybe I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind doing some social distancing, bonfiring. Yeah, we'll we'll pay for Ubers for uh, Whitsky and and Black Lou to come out and hang out. We'll just all stand at a six foot distance. We should just gonna meet at a park in Jersey. Yeah, lucky dude. For you, lucky for you, my ropes travel seven feet. Do it, dude. You can come. You, dude, that's an impressive distance. If you could come seven feet, that would almost be like you have a spring in your balls. Christine, bring up a video of furthest cum shot. There's going to be something on a video. I mean, there's got there's some impressive uh, one. One of my favorite uh, in, in recent history porn searches is how do you look it up to? They call you, you look up body shots. <laughs> is that what it's compilations? called? Compilations, but that's like that's pulling out of the puss. And just hitting the face from like between the legs, and I mean, like, I may, a, I may have four of those on my complete record. That's more uh, distance. Uh, that's more accuracy than distance. I would think that's distance. You, that's pretty good distance. And it is pretty good distance. But I would feel like if you hit a seven foot shot, you just have to watch it leave like Barry Bonds. <laughs> you stand there and look at it uh, yeah. like and this. My, you put yeah. your hand over your eyes. You even flip the rest of the cum that came out of your dick. <laughs> And then just take a slow trot around the room. Yeah, they go, you know, you know, uh, it's actually pretty rude to do that in sex circles. <laughs> You're not supposed to watch your cum shot go. You hit the girl in the face and she goes, ooh, take your bases. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, Barry Bonds. <laughs> I um, Don't you, what, do you, uh, and by the way, it's been confirmed now, I believe Christine and Alex said it. Um, farthest cum shot ever? Oh, Perfect. Let's see this guy's fucking shot. I mean, I'd be honest with you, it can't be that far. It's pretty close. Is he just putting it in sheets? He's got a great hey. pip. I mean, yeah. pip. If nah, dude, that, that, that ain't nothing. That be the furthest one ever. I that's mean, like, that's like saying you're the most dangerous. That definitely hits a face. Yeah, but that's like sure. someone saying uh, they're the most dangerous comedian in the world. It's like, yeah, and then they're just like, you know, it's, it's just racist. Yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean, oh. like. It's not really dangerous, much as it is racist. He's telling people to murder. All right, well, that wasn't. That was thumbs down. Thumbs but down I've heard, that. I've now heard from, uh, and maybe uh, B Rod can back this up. That uh, you know, look, some girls love big dicks. Some girls really don't care. No one likes tiny dicks, that's for sure. But, you don't know that. Uh, you don't know that. I'm there could be sure. women with very tiny vaginas. I think there's girls that can get over tiny dicks, but like, uh, I think no girl likes a tiny dick. I think most girls are fine with an average dick, and I think uh, some girls like big dicks. Although Christine, every well, only Christine and Alex Scarlato from uh, Skanks have supported this, but very much so that the uh, a girl is actually more like feels like more satisfied. Like if a guy just shoots like a drizzler, yeah, just, like seeps out and just gets like a little dot right on the right on the beef. Versus like really like raining down like girls do see that as a sign of like I did something better because I got more like, like like it's better a girl enjoys more a large cum shot. You're saying that yeah they enjoy it more when they pop the bottle of champagne. 
I would yeah, yeah. feel better like if the bed's wet. Yeah. Yes, I feel I better when the bed's wet. It could be a part part of the reason why girls take birth control also because it feels good, you know, inside. Really? Getting getting that done up in you? Yeah, nice like, strong oh, there it shot is. inside. You're like, oh wow, it feels it, like good in a way that nothing else does. Does it feel like getting a? I I don't have a vagina, but I would imagine it feels like a uh, squirt gun shooting in you. Like yeah, like a warm pow. squirt gun. Like oh. <laughs> oh, the concept you of to, feeling. You have to understand. It's like con- when you also feel <laughs> like it's when you guys are at like your top notch. Is like right as it's happening. Well, I don't know because I I brought this up on a real ass podcast when they were saying like I think if you were gay and you had a dude come in your butt, I don't know if it would feel like you're like it would be itchy <laughs> if you'd be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like second he shot, you'd be like, oh, get out, get out. Where's B Rod taking us? I thought she was taking us to see Angels Come Shot. Yeah, she goes watch. She goes <laughs> it's across the room. She goes you can see the distance now. Watch this catcher's <laughs> mitt. <laughs> catcher's mitt. Um. I, yeah, I, 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 I couldn't. I couldn't imagine the feeling of uh, how can you? Because we don't have pussies, but we do have buttholes. But I couldn't imagine like feeling like something eject out of something that's inside. You know what I mean? Well, I, I don't know. Let Go me ahead. ask a question because me, you, nor uh, you know, I think Becky and Christina are the only two that have blown a guy. But um, is that weird when they come in your mouth? Is it like a squirt gun? That's got to feel like that. Always like tickled my cheeks whenever I would. You know, when you're like little and you're just at the pool and you're in the mouth, yeah, yeah, squirt in the mouth. It always tickles my cheeks. The pressure's too much. I mean, what's the velocity you're fucking firing at here, Dan? Super soaker dog. (laughs) I. What's worse is when you can tell that you have like a a light load. Yeah. On a on a swallow (laughs) beach, like you're like, yeah, that was really nothing. (laughs) It's a a half poured shot. You're just like, oh, I don't know. There's something there. You want him to come out like a uh, mini driver in uh, Goodwill Hunting when she did her joke. You want him to go like, I can't so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, that's really funny because I never, I never thought about that. Yeah, a wet sheet. Christine's right. A wet sheet does make me feel like, look at that, huh? Look at look who got water ballooned. <laughs> <laughs> I just think she pees. Yeah, you just think that's how she gets out of it? I just think no. I just feel like it's like my weight on top of somebody has just made them uh, piss. She goes, "Oh, you're sque- oh Jay, you're squeezing the piss out of me." <laughs> <laughs> that guy fucked the piss right out of me. Oh God, I'm fucking. Oh God, I'm dripping. I'm dripping. I'm dripping. Come, no piss. A lot of piss. Yeah, DJ Lou, are you a roper, dude? You fire off them, them, them body shots. <laughs> I try my best. I think she would enjoy a big rope than a, than a short one. No, for sure. But do you uh, are you inconsistent? Yeah. That's the funny thing too. Uh, some have you ever had something work to fire a long one and you you try to reenact that the what for me that i see in porn and i've tried and has worked before is the really squeezing down the top when you're about to come and kind oh of, you pinch the hose yeah and then i gotta hold back and let it fire now that has worked before what's really funny is when you do that squeeze and then like you're holding you just go ah and it's still just like <laughs> just like the drip comes out and you're like dude what was all that holding then i'm worried that i have like a like dried, blocked up jizz in my fucking hole. So I'm like, there had to be more than that in there. I had this roommate in Tucson um, when we lived, like, shout out, I- Ina Road, uh, up on I-10 and Ina. Um, yeah. m- my buddy bought a house up there, and he was, like, a young dude. Him and his mom, like, f- were, like, flipping houses or some shit. This is, like, 2002. And he was young. He was my age. He was 19. And I remember in the kitchen, he was, like, having a meltdown because he's like, dude, I don't shoot ropes anymore. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I just drizzle out. And I was like, weird. We were all like 19 and really made this guy feel like shit about himself. He was like, oh man, I'm just drizzling. And we're like, oh, you got stroke cum? Ew. <laughs> and he's like, shut up, shut up. And then it like, you know, he's an awesome dude. Morgan was an awesome guy, but you could really, he could get in your head and he could, you could get in his head. I didn't know that because growing up, you know, like Christine, you're an only child. And I feel like a lot of only uh, black losing only child. When you're around people like um, like Shane that are really good at getting in your head and being like, "What are you thinking about? Why are you doing that?" And you're like, "Shut up! Oh my God, the door!" And Morgan was that friend of mine where he'd always be like, "I can just walk around your brain. I'm walking." Around. He got me freshman year of college. We were walking back from a party, and it was like raised uh, cement, you know, just like along the side. 
and uh i was like walking along it you know just like foot in front of the other and he goes i bet you can't make it to the end of the street and i was like what it's like two inches off the ground it's fine. <laughs> so i started going foot by foot and he was like i bet you can't do it and he started this he had this laugh where he would start cackling i fell down I fell down on two inches of fucking concrete where I was like, uh, uh, and then I fell and fucking ate shit. And like, you know, I had skin on my palms and like, my, uh. and you do that thing where his laugh then got louder and like more intense. So I got up like, fuck you. I fucking hate you. But then <laughs> you, don't, you don't realize those people, you can get in their heads just as easy. Oh, yeah. When I found when I lived with him and I found out about that cum thing, I just kept bringing it up all the time, and he'd be like, "Shut up, dude! Fuck you! That's not true." I, I'd be like, "What's up?" I kept calling him Toaster Strudel. I was like, "What's up, Toaster Strudel?" That's a fucking painted around like a cake, and he'd be like, "Shut up! I shoot ropes! I shoot ropes!" He just yelled that one day. That's uh, the the big dick black dude in porn. I was uh, Shane Diesel, I believe. Is one of those guys? Have you ever seen the black guys who like wring their dick out at the end? I mean, really give well, us that's a lot of porn. A lot of trying to get toothpaste out. You're like, they, I mean, no, but so they really like like take the head and like, first of all, their head they can fist their entire head and they just like, squeeze it out like they're trying to get like the end of the cake batter. But it is. I don't know about you, but I remember you know obviously I watched porn before I had sex, and I always thought when like a guy would come in porn and then the girl would touch it after sex, and he'd be like yeah yeah. I always thought it felt really good, and then the first time I came with a girl and she tried touching my dick, I'm like what are you doing? <laughs> stop 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 stop. Uh, how about when you have? A, I assume Dan, you've had Drizzlers in your life, like ah, dude, yeah, dude. I'm like I probably say I'm sixty forty shoot to Drizz. I'd love the. Uh, I'd love the moment of the when it only gets on your hand and then you have to like tit paint. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It only looks like you're trying to get it off of you. <laughs> like, this is, here, this is what, it should have hit here. This is for a year. And a little bit should have gotten there. <laughs> what about an unceremonious pile where the thigh meets hip? <laughs> you just put it there. You go, I, I put it down here in case you wanted to come get it. I didn't know where to put it. Dude, I told you the, the second girl to ever blow me was like a three month girlfriend. Yeah. And she uh and she she blew me and I'm trying to think. I don't think the first girl I was fucking like swallowed cum or anything. Yeah. And so this girl, like she wouldn't I I didn't fuck this girl. She just blew me. Uh as Mike goes very weird. I'd eat her pussy and she blew me. But the first time she blew me, I like I came in her mouth. I, I said I was gonna come but and she like kept it in her mouth yeah and then uh and then i was like oh, that was fucking crazy that was great and then uh reached down like to you know pull my underwear up or whatever and, and she just like it was a it feel like it was a big load at least she just took it in the mouth and then just <laughs> just spit it right right next to my dick <laughs> like, wait you know, on you it's on me just spit it back on me dude, daddy's so do return to sender that's fucking great. <laughs> I got my just come back on you. She, she goes, sorry, I had to refund it. Uh, and it was a real like, whoop. <laughs> I feel like if I were born a woman or a gay man uh, and I suck dick, I think I would have a lot of fun with the taking down of cum. I feel like I would fake chew a lot just because I think that would be funny. Like if you blew a guy and you're like, <laughs> and then you're like, mm. <laughs> just not me. I would do the thing. I would pin him down. Is yeah. off, and then I would do the thing where I like let it come out of my mouth a lot, and then slurp it back up. I, I would. <laughs> I think I would wait until he's pulling his pants up, and I'd hide it in my mouth, and then I'd spit it in my hand, and I'd go snowball fight. Or even after blowing him, I'd, yeah, I'd spit it in my hand, and then as he was leaving the room, I go, "Hey, that was a good time. Put her there." And I do like <laughs> you do a fun thing. Get him, get him, fucking joy buzzer. I would. <laughs> I was. I would spit it in my hand and put it under his pillow and then later tell him, I think the jizz fairy came to your room today. <laughs> Check, under. Check under the pillow. Goes, did you, oh, you, did you leave a tooth under here last night? <laughs> oh, someone took it. Someone came in someone's mouth and the tooth fairy returned your load under the pillow. It's fucking so funny. Or gay vengeance where you take it in the yeah. mouth and go into the bathroom and they just spit it on his toothbrush. Dude, there's got to be stories like that. This is where I wish we had callers access to callers because there's got to be. We've got it. Can we set oh, up like a like jizz, uh, like like jizz vengeance? Yeah, you know what we should do is we should start having people leave voicemails. 
where we can respond to their voicemails. Can we set up a line, uh, Jacob yeah, and Christine? I can, yep, we can set up uh, a Google Voice account. Yeah, why don't we, we do that? Have, like a voicemail inbox for sure. And then Jay and I can go through, you know, and we can do like a couple voicemails a week just to see how uh, the campers are doing. What's yeah. the, can you think of the, uh, I'm going to throw this to the whole crew here. Someone's got to have something. What's the most vengeful thing like you've ever done? Like as far oh, dude, as, I would tell you. Know, you like, go I, good. No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I think I told the story on the bonfire. I was with Morgan, the guy I was talking about, and he hooked up with this girl that he met at school. And he was like, yeah, dude, we can go to their dorm apartment. Come with me. We're going to be drinking. And I was like, yeah, awesome. He's like, she's got a friend. And I went, and he was immediately hooking up with the girl he knew. So it was just me and the friend. And we're, like, hanging out. And she was, like, talking to me. And she's like, so are you in a frat? And I was like, no, I'm not in a frat. And she was like, oh, well, like, do you go out? And I was like, uh, I don't really have any money, you know? Like, I kind of just work at this radio station. I, but like i get to go to concerts and she was like you don't have any money i was like no she goes okay thanks and then left the <laughs> living room and she went into the room where my friend morgan was hooking up with her friend and she started getting dressed and she's like i'm gonna go out i think the guys from sigma new have like a party or something and i was just sitting in the living room and i was like wait what's going on and she's like it was that kind of thing where i went and i was like Morgan, what's going on? And he threw me the keys to his truck. And he's like, yeah, dude, sorry. I don't know what's going on. And the girl was like, okay, just such an out-of-pocket bitch yeah. to my face. That she left. She left before me. And I was like, well, here Did we you go. You went in there thinking you were going to fuck? Yeah. I went in thinking like, no, I went in thinking not that I was going to fuck, but like that there was a girl that was like, she. it was really like 70s sitcom. Like, she's good for you. And I was like, oh, okay. And I went and like, she uh, she was a real she was a tiny skinny blonde lady with a really big nose. So the second she walked out, I was like fucking. I went. That's when I went to the bedroom. I was like, hey, Tuki and Sam just fucking left. What am I supposed to do? And he was like, here's my car keys. And I just kept going, follow your nose, follow your nose. <laughs> and then I went. I went into the living room and it was just spiteful as fuck. I took her remote control. I threw it in the trash can because no one looks for the remote in the trash can. I took two boxes of Capri Suns, put them out in the hallway. Those are mine now. And then, <laughs> and then I went into the bathroom and I just pissed all over the shower handle and her loofah. I, <laughs> Hell yeah. And then, Hell uh, yeah. And then I fucking uh, smoked some of their weed, took some, and then went and got in the truck and drove back up to Ina Road. Got some Waffle House. Had two boxes of Capri Suns in the back of the fucking Tacoma. I, Jesus. I mean, that's a good prize, though. Listen, man, honestly, it's better, it's better than hooking up. I mean, if we're being real honest, this if you're broke and you have two boxes of Capri Sun, not two great. pouches. No, 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 no. Boxes no, no. of pouches. Loved it. Loved yeah. it. It was a big score. And uh, that's, a big, that's a big score, dude. That's super spiteful. Score. Super spiteful. That girl did nothing wrong. She just didn't want to hook up with me, which, sure, well, she, was she was a being bitchy for sure. She was being a bitch. That's definite. But she was just a vapid twat. And uh, I, yeah. the thing I was I mean, the most that, happy I, about I, was the remote right. in the trash. That's a good one. Cause hopefully, she might throw some food on it. I'll tell. Uh, I'll, I'll tell the two things that are mine. I think I may have told this in the bonfire too. But for one, one I know in something. I believe it was like maybe soup or something. But like really angry at my stepfather when I was like a pretty little kid. I like spit in his soup. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh, which, oh man, that just made me think of another. Which, sa which sounds like crazy hate. Which, sa which sounds crazy heinous. But I was like so like. I wanted to do something shitty to him, but like I didn't. I don't think you know I wasn't that evil, so I think I even was just like you know, it was like a, like you it's know, what I mean, it wasn't like I didn't fucking like hang out longer. I don't even know how to do that to this day, but like I just kind of like whatever. It was it's still fucking gross. That and then the uh, the one I always have is, uh, I had some drinks. I was staying at a, I was maybe my first time ever like headlining. I don't know if it was a night or something at a Stress Factory. Yeah, and Julian McCullough was the host, and. uh and these girls came back to the hotel. Like he kind of brought the girls back to the hotel. Sure, sure. And uh, and he was like hanging out in my room. And then like uh, and there was like you know a, a better looking one and a less good looking one. The better looking one was already, of course, all over. Uh, hey, geez, gorgeous. That's why she's there. Julian brought her there. Yeah, Julian. and I'm like I'm like Julian sure. And, and the, the finest. But, but the other one was cute. It was it wasn't like a bad looking girl. You know, I don't remember her being like unattractive at all. It was just like one was like wow, and the other one was like she's cute. Yeah. Um, which was fine with me. And then, like, Julian went in the bathroom with the one and got in the shower. 
uh, got in the shower with him. Yeah. And like, uh, which is weird in my room. Very odd. Yes, but, uh, he, had, he had his own room? Huh? Did he no, he lived room? down there. He lived down oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. He went to Rutgers. Yeah. So he, uh, so he's, uh, in the shower with the one. And then the, uh, other girl, like, didn't want to, and I guess I'm not like aggressive. So I didn't like go for it. And she didn't seem to be like yeah. that, like, up for anything. But you're like, uh, all right, I guess we'll just kind of chill here or whatever. And then she's like, she like, knocks in the bathroom door and is like, so and so, can I come in? And they're like, yeah. And then she got in the shower with them all. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude, and, uh, losing, it, losing a girl to a friend in the threesome is that stings. That's wild, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, I, 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 I don't say the opposite the one time when I had, I'll tell you what I did, but that's just real quick sidebar is, uh, in Kalamazoo, Michigan, I think there was like a girl said she was a stripper. She was hot. Dude. She was so, I was like, what? I mean, winging it at me, basically saying like, I'm going to hang out with you tonight. Yeah. I'm like, actually, I'm pretty sure this is the night that I, I've told the before where I, uh, talked the girl into letting me uh, titty fuck her with doing like the whole I was I think I used to say it on stage even when she was like I don't like to have one night stands and stuff or hook up because like then the, all of a sudden the guy wants you to like leave right afterwards it's so shitty and I was like God I hate the guys do that yeah. <laughs> and then when and I said right after we finished I was in the bathroom peeing and I was like you know you might want to get out of home though before that storm comes in and your car is like stuck here you know I'm 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 out of here uh, in the morning or whatever and I was just started laughing as I was saying I was like what the fuck am I doing but I think. I think the reason I even got in that weird situation that night was because this girl wanted to uh, hook up, and then her, she went to go tell her friend she was with a couple that she was going to hang with me, and then they got really upset because they said, I thought we were going to have a threesome tonight, and oh. she came back and she goes, I forgot, I promised them. I have a, it's like so funny when she's like, even like, I'm not going to fuck you, I'm going to do something even wilder and crazy, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> like I can't pull her away from that, and it was just like such like a, it was <laughs> such a blue ball. So wait, um, so wait, she so she didn't wait. Was this the girl that you titty fucked or not? Did she go back with a couple? No, no, no. She left with a couple, and then I went to a bar and literally drunkenly was like, "Who's gonna give the comedian a ride home?" That's so <laughs> funny. Some girl was like, "I'll take you." Home. What a and funny way her. for her to bail. She was like though. a softball player, like looking girl too. It was just she it was goes, just funny. She goes, "Oh my god, you are so fucking funny and hot, and I really <laughs> want to fuck you, but I totally forgot that I have to do like this." baby oil orgy at my friend's house where basically we just like suck every piece of cum out of them but anyways you're like awesome so i'll see you later the guy's like thank you dude I, yeah dude i think i was even like it's like uh can i come back to that and it's like they're not that wild <laughs> yeah you're like well, i think it was like a firm no and you're like Oh. Okay, that seems a real medium rare to rare kind of ask. Well, but uh, if, if I just got invited to that, like out of the blue, first thing, I probably would have been like, no, no, no. Yeah. But like when the girl was like, I'm fucking the shit out of you tonight. Yeah. And go, Let me just go tell my friends I'm leaving with you and I'll be right back. And she came back and like, I totally. And like they came in that area too and were like standing there like, waiting for her, like, Dude. I guess to make sure that I didn't try to convince her the other way. There is nothing better than those situations. And I'm sure every single one on the, on the crew and us have gone through it with those situations where you're out and you're single and a girl's like, there is nothing stopping us from having the wildest sex of our entire life. Oh my God, my mother just died of cancer AIDS. And, well, and you're like, well, I don't want to get too far off track because I want to tell you that me and Christine have had that situation come up really fucking hilarious. And I don't know if I've ever told on here. It's, it's worth telling. Please so get go, back to the spiteful the, shit. Yeah, I don't get the spiteful shit. So the girl gets in the bathroom uh, or goes in the shower with it. So he's in there with two girls hooking up. Two sets and, of giggles and Julian with all those his hands everywhere. And I was like, hey guys, I'm coming and I have to take a piss. I mean, just downtrodden. Really, I was like, I gotta take a piss, and I look over, and the lights are all off, but like, I have the door open so I can, if I can see the lights. And, uh, and I was sitting there, and I was like, uh, and I just hear them in the shower, like, you know, you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, Ugh. and dude, I'm just on the, a full drinking piss all over those girls' clothes, all over. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and like 15 minutes later, when they left, dude, just coming out, they just assumed the shower, like. I think you have like a exactly leak. I think you have like a leak in your shower. And they walked out and pissed. I mean, soaked and pissed their clothes, and they left like 15 minutes later. You know, oh, it was Jesus, so goddamn dude. funny. Dude. Even Julian, I told him right after they left, and he was laughing his ass off. Uh, but again, you know, that's like early 20s. There's, I wouldn't do anything like that. Uh, uh, now I don't think maybe, but I don't think but, I would. But that's, that's the way to get away, uh, that's that's the way to get away with it. To go, and I want to get everyone's like spite stories, but to go 
just to tag on to what you were just saying before about like, my father has cancer AIDS. Me and Christine, it was uh, maybe Austin, Texas or something. There was this uh, Asian girl and her friend who were like, oh, let's come. We would come back to you. Everyone was drinking. Like, we would come back to your room. And the Asian girl was like skittish. Yeah. Like a little bit, but she, it was her, her, she was the leader of the charge of the whole thing, but then like kind of wanted to like observe more than anything else. But, uh, uh, Christine, she was, trying, other, she, was she was basically trying to Don King that. Yeah. She was, yeah. Like, she was promoting it. But Christine was having a ball. Her. Oh, what we found out from that girl is it's like she wanted to hang and felt like that was her in, which unfortunately like has oh, happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it kind of, we came to kind of realize like, Oh, this might not exactly be how she wants us to see her, Got but it. her friend was like all in. <laughs> yeah, her friend was all. So in. So I went in the bathroom with her friend. <laughs> yeah, That's but they, so anyway. funny though the, the thought that like there's these two girls and they go to a comedy show and like the fan, the real big fan, is like, okay, listen. So I'm gonna like talk to him about maybe like a threesome because I just like want to hang out with him and I love him. And the friend's just like, I'm your Huckleberry. But <laughs> <He goes up laughs> she's like. I'll suck and fuck my way through this whole fucking thing. Uh, well, this is fucking hilarious. So it's getting raunchy with this other one, but it's just starting. Yeah. Just starting. So I'm sitting in the other room, like kind of <laughs> almost talking to the other one. Going, like she's like sitting with her top off and you're just like, Hey, like, you know, it's like, if you want to split, like split or whatever. But she was like, she kept doing like, no, no. I'm like, yeah, like, I want to like watch and be I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, who cares? And then like, I see, the other girl's phone ringing and i see it says like like mom or something like that so it's like uh i think i try to even like you know like, like shove it off the nail yeah. so i'm like you know don't let's not get involved in that and she goes is her phone going off i was like i don't know it might be a text phone you know like whatever i'm just trying to like yeah. not too much attention she goes no it's her mom like and it's something like it, for whatever reason it was like her mom never calls her it's something and you're like oh gee and so she's like so it's so, like your mom's uh calling on the phone your mom's going she goes, she's called like three times, it looks like. So I don't know if it's, I'm like, so the girl like literally breaks off and comes out and answers. She just doesn't think she has the phone. She's like, hello? And she goes, no, oh my God, what? No, no, okay. No, I'm coming right now. I'm coming right now. I'm coming. And she gets, she hangs the phone with Frantic. So her dad had like a heart attack or something. So and, then there and she had to fucking run off. And then the other girl, <laughs> we were just sitting there, this girl sitting with her tits out. Like, yeah. ah, scram, lady. <laughs> like, I don't, like, it's like, I let us fuck now. <laughs> like, beat it. Dude, that's just, the, there's so many funny things about that. First, you just like trying to knock it under a pillow where you're like, eh, eh. and she's like, no, that's crazy. That phone's ringing again. You go, oh, it's just her mom. I think she's just trying to call her. Her mom hasn't seen her in nine years. And you go, fuck. Dude, that that girl is like uh, around. Like, I've seen her like since. Like, she's like, I, I, she's like, I would, I'd call her like, fr like a friend to some degree. Like, I know her. Yeah. And she's like, fine. Like, she's like, but the scene where she's at, people hate her. And last time I was there, she gave me a uh, uh, a comic book. She's married now, I think, or like, uh, or with a long term guy. She has a kid. Yeah. But like, she goes, "I've been making this new comic." She's like a super like uh, like Comic Con person. Do you remember this? Yeah. Scene? <laughs> she made a comic. I definitely told you or brought this. But I think I brought it back. She makes a comic book that she draws. That's like kind of like anime looking. But it's just her and her, and <laughs> pussy whipping her fucking boyfriend. <laughs> it's just that's all it is like a comedy of like her just berating like this guy, this like beta male guy. It's so weird, dude. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, and that was the girl that had to leave because of her dad having a heart attack? No, no that, that was the that organizer. Was the girl that was like the girl was doing I don't the whole. Know if this is how I, I want you she, to see me. Yeah, I don't know if like it's like she wanted to like, like in. Like, I think she was just like she's like she wanted to seem like a cool chick yeah. to me so she like dove in as much as she was willing to dive in but it was just one of the things like you don't have to do this at all yeah i like, remember like why are you just like just feed us your friend your friend's definitely down well, there's people a situ... go ahead Sorry, i was in it was a situation so when me too happened i remember going to jay and being like let's fucking run an evaluation really quick yeah i'm like is there anything like we should feel bad about like we need to make it like is there anything and that was a situation that came to my mind just because, like, even though, like, we weren't, we didn't have any malintention, it felt like somebody doing something that they didn't necessarily want to do because they didn't know how else to make a connection. 
For sure. And that sucked. For sure. But I don't know. And, and for some but reason, she, man, by the way, she didn't feel that way. I, I, she didn't like put that on me or Jay. No, no. I, 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 by, by the way, speaking of the Me Too thing, like it's so funny. Me Too, like Christine did. She's really like, we have to take stock. Is there anyone? We, and I go, no, like I didn't. Even, I don't have to, like think for two seconds. I'm like, not even sort of. And then, uh, and then uh, it, my, my, it's in regular life, like Keith Robinson, remember that was his joke, goes, Jay, how many Me Too's you got coming? And I was just yeah. like, I, I confidently don't even think and go, Zier, zilch. Dude, I'm so nervous of somebody not wanting to do it the entire time. <laughs> I'm like, we generally, we it. generally would like read signals, but I'm not saying that we haven't read a signal or jumped on a signal for somebody that may be a bit inappropriate. I mean, so, I'm, still, I'm still thinking about that mom calling her daughter and then finally hitting her and she's like honey what are you doing and she's like i said a lady's finger inside me what's up mom what's going on buddy i'm telling you where that night was going it was unduplicated action from christine since that day <laughs> that girl was down it I was know, not her first was one of my favorite i was like this chick likes chicks it really yeah. they, you know look when when you have three it's like i'm not going out like sleeping with women it's like we're sleeping with women that want to have threesomes like whether so it's like whatever the attraction is and then so it's like when you was when that you women, a girl women or what were you sleeping women before? women women, okay, women. Okay. all right we have been uh, dan, we were just dan, 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 dan that girl's foot at one point was up on a bathroom <laughs> doorknob i don't know how else to describe it without being too filthy or selling christina there, there, there's man, been like bananas <laughs> and then it just got hard cut like, off this chick, <laughs> this chick likes chicks man and this chick likes yeah. me and that's really fun we and fucked I again. Don't worry, girl. And I liked it. Yeah, it's fucking. <laughs> good. And it's but I'm saying to have that. I mean, I literally, I I know that scene because I was in the bathroom and then left the bathroom to be like, hey, you guys. Have, I mean, real swingery. Like, hey, you girls have fun. I'm gonna go like smoke a cigarette, or whatever the fuck it was. So funny. That's when in that room. I'm just sitting there at that table. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I even drew the other girl over like to the table where i chose it could have been something that was never seen it could have just been like ham 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 it's going off man who cares oh whatever oh yeah wah, wah. just those noises wah. and the phone's just dancing on the table ham, ham. Yeah. Your well, I guess father. that was the thing too. It was like you know, it's like her mom calling at like two in the morning is probably what it is. You know, yeah. Also, her, her vibe. So she was like, she called like three times. She's like, what? No, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> like, scary. Just my father just had a heart attack. Was that what it was? Right? Yeah, dude. Uh, I, think, I think it ended up being something with a dog. Honestly. No, I thought that was. No, 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 uh, no you're, thinking of, you're thinking of Denver. You're just mixing those two because it's a very similar uh, thing. But that was like uh, well, no one was fucking on that one. Wax. I wasn't there. No, this was like her dad. Something terrible. Like maybe he fell and was taken to the hospital or whatever it was. It was just like was. she was frantic and had to get out and was like, I, By I the can't. Way, we did try. We're like, eh, why don't we just like, like I think we did like I because I was like I had full balls. So I was like, ah, hey, you sure you don't want to <laughs> just finish up here before you go? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like I mean, he's gonna be there. Here's your proof yeah, of God. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just you know let's all come first <laughs> there's your proven god his uh that little that that man's little girl was was doing horrific things and he was like i gotta take you down to save her and he's like do it and he's like oh ah, ah, fuck. something's happening i think tammy's sucking puss and dick <laughs> oh, it god. was godless <laughs> oh god i think she's going full buffet oh god my Dude, it was it was uh nuts and then just to have it be that hard cut off was such so a funny thing. But, but we didn't do it. It was, was just, no and it was like a hard line of like moments over. Yeah, I don't think you can. It, that's really weird to to go from like sad news to devious sex. You have to be a real sociopath to be like, oh, no, my cousin's dead. You want to suck me off on the highway? <laughs> you have to have like I don't know. So and so had a heart attack, but he's OK. They're just keeping him. No, from okay, the fine. Like, I'm talking about death, dude. Oh, yeah. oh, if you could fuck through a definite death. Dude, if you could get news of a death and then still pop a load, that's crazy. <laughs> I wonder what the worst news anyone's ever gotten while dicks inside them. We're like, I got to take this call. Hang on a second. Or, or <laughs> what? The worst, the but, worst, you, by the way, you hear thing, you feel their pussy squeezing on your wing. Uh, huh? What? Uh, oh. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. Uh, jerk off of one of my favorite players is traded from the Niners. <laughs> I'm like, DeForest Buckner's a Colt? I don't want to fucking no. do this. 
Oh man, I can't. But I'm wondering, like, what people have heard. What's the worst news you've heard and immediately fucked? You know what I mean? Be like, you're in bed with someone and you're kissing. You're like, what's that? Oh my god, my grandfather was traced to Joseph Goebbels. Oh no. Oh, he was a murderer. Oh, hold on. All right, bye. And then you're just like, I gotta fucking bang this out. Just finish up. Yeah, just like let me get this. I'm so sorry to hear about oh. your loss. I'm sorry your child died of leukemia. Oh, about uh, to come. Uh, DJ Lou, you got to have a wicked spite story. I, I've been thinking about it the whole time. I don't, not really that spiteful when I was younger. Vengeful. vengeful. My, yeah, my brother would be the one that would get revenge. Like the only thing. Really? Was, yeah, my twin. We were at this bar one time with a really good friend of mine's daughter. And she was our age, and uh, she uh, she didn't want to go with my brother. And his reply to her was, "Well, you better keep showcasing those tits, honey, because that's all you got in life." Whoa! And it really yeah, she that, started that straight to the face, vengeful. Yeah, she cried and and ruined the friendship between her uh, her dad and us. Oh, oh shit! Whoa. He just he just walked past. I got to stop with the story. Oh man, yeah, Will's gonna just attack you. <laughs> He's like, "Fuck you, dude! Why are you fucking airing that?" He told me shit, dude. He's like, uh, he, goes, he goes, one time he was mad at this uh, this guy, this dad who lived in the street, so he fucked his 14-year-old daughter. He goes, that's pretty crazy. He goes, one time we were driving on 95, and this uh, van, uh, this family cut us off, and then like Will followed him home, and then he took out this 9 millimeter and uh, execution style murdered the dad in front of the family, and then we left. And you're like, <laughs> huh? Okay. What? What? What's up? Uh, all right. <laughs> <He> goes, <laughs> execution style. First, he made him watch. He wanted him to know that it was his fault that he was murdering his family in front of yeah. him. And then and he then, also, and then had him close his eyes and get on his knees. And in front of his son, he made him blow a gun like it was a dick. <laughs> and then, and then, oh my know, god! <laughs> suck on it, daddy. He goes, Jesus Christ! Look at your dad. Look at your daddy suck that cold steel. You go, dude. Yeah. I am not. I am not fucking with Will. I took Capri Suns. That's all <laughs> I did. But you said spiteful stuff. Um, I did spiteful stuff all the time as a waiter. I stuck my finger up my butt and fucking mixed a margarita. Hell yeah. Really? Yeah. You really crammed it in the hole or just got some of the crack sweat? All, all, I legitimately, one of three times I've ever put my finger in my butt. Yeah, the other two are for pledge. The other two are just seeing what's what's going on in the head of Danny Sands. Daniel. <laughs> one, one was a vacation. <laughs> I hope he did it with the old yeah. the swirl on a rocks class. I, swear I did. It was uh it really was one of those things where yeah, Jay, I go, one of those was for work, two of those were vacation. <laughs> Dan, what did the guy do? It wasn't a guy. Uh it was <laughs> just two for the party. Yeah, I go. <laughs> I go, one's to pay taxes, two's for saving. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Dude, one, for, one for petty cash, two for 401k. <laughs> that's, that's retirement fund, Holmes. <laughs> but he, um, no, so, Christine, it was 2008 or 2009. It was when the economy collapsed, uh, the crash, and then it was just, like, all rich European people. It was all, like... Really rich Spaniards, really rich um, British people. That's Australia. literally right when I moved here. It's like September 08. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It everything was like, went to shit, and it was like... Yeah, so it's that, it might have been, been 09, because it was cafe season, and the this four top of Spaniards, I was closing lunch. I was out on the cafe, so it definitely was 09, uh, or I don't know. Who gives a fuck? And, yes, man, waiting. When the thing crashed, was it like noticeable? Like, like really? Like you saw people not coming out to restaurants dude, and stuff? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't notice the crash in my world at all. I was working in Midtown as the crash happened that day during the day. And usually uh, when I'd wait tables at Dos Caminos, you'd have the lunch rush, which would be around 1130 to 2, 230. And then 230 to 5 was pretty much dead. You Like as a closer, you'd get whatever table came into the restaurant so you're just hoping for tables the, the day the the 2008 crash i was uh I, it was me and one other closer because cafe was open and you know it was like 2 30 lunch rush ended and we were like ah, all right yeah, that was a good pop what do you want to do i'd go smoke a cigarette uh, come back, drink soda. You know, I'd always be just filling my soda can or my soda glass up at the fucking thing. Eat, have them make a guac that I would hide in one of the hutches 
and just eat guac or whatever go back there. And so I'm just like hanging out, chilling. And all of a sudden, it's like you see at the at the host stand, like four businessmen come in and they go out to the cafe. And I was like, oh shit, I forgot who I was closing with. Might have been my buddy Craig. And I was like, hey, I got I got one forty one. And then all of a sudden, another four top came in. Then a two top came in. It's all guys, all guys in their suits. And you'd sit down, you walk over, and be like, hey, what's going on, guys? And I would probably say 90% of the tables would just hand me a credit card and they'd go Patron margarita and a shot of Patron. And you're like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. And then we had, you know, we had a TV in the bar and it was like the the stock market might have crashed or whatever. And then we noticed that it was the cafe filled up and we were in the weeds almost instantaneously. And it was all drinking. And then it just kept going. It was like 2.30 to 3.30, 3.30 to 4.30. By 4 o'clock, there were guys in the bathroom throwing up, like in suits, throwing up in the bathroom. And then you found out these were all expense accounts. These were all guys from Lehman Brothers, from Blackstone, from Bear Stearns. That's where all these offices were. It wasn't down on Wall Street. It was like in Midtown. So these guys were just coming in and fucking blowing money on their corporate accounts. I didn't give a fuck. I was ringing up everything. I walked that day. Craig and I each walked with like, or it might not have been Craig, might have been my buddy Eli, 350. We each walked with 350, which on a lunch shift is like insane. Like compared that's to what that's t- like. Are you getting this somewhere in there? You fuck, are you going to somewhere in there? You figured your ass. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, just watch it. Just out of pure pleasure of watching the <laughs> guys eat it. I'm like, ooh, ooh. it's built up the housing market. Now it's collapsed. Ooh. Oh, Cost a little prostate push. Ooh. ooh. No, but that fucked shit up. After that, after that day, I made good money that day. But after that, no one was coming out for lunches. Uh, all those, you know, a couple of those shops closed up. So people were just like, like money went down as like a lunch closer. And Europeans started coming in and they don't tip. And they, they just not fucking, tip. They don't they tip. They're just, they do not tip. <laughs> and they might have gotten better. It's 2020. But in 2009, they sure as fuck didn't tip. And this table, it was like 415. So I'm done. I'm almost done. Table of four Spaniards come in. Spaniards are the rudest. Rich Spaniards are some of the rudest people I've ever met in my life. Like legitimately. You don't mean that. They call you boy because I think that's how it translates. But they'll be like, (laughs) boy, boy, bring me more chips. And I'm a psycho. And most of the time I was hung over when I was at work. So I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you fucking talk to someone like that? And I'd get mad and fired up. So, um. I take the table. It's four Spaniards. They all have shopping bags from Saks and from Bloomingdale's. And like, you can't get to the table because there's so many shopping bags. And you have to like place down the chips. You have to like pour the water and shit. So I'm trying to do all that. The woman orders a fruit, a uh, passion fruit margarita, which comes on the rocks. I can tell you exactly how it's prepared. I'm pretty sure Christine can tell you how it's garnished. Three blueberries on a toothpick. And you bring a passion fruit margarita. So I, I bring uh, and with and with an orange, an orange and three blueberries. So I bring. It's on the rocks. It's one hundred percent on the rocks. I know the menu. A passion fruit margarita is on the rocks. So I bring her a passion fruit margarita, and she goes, "No." She just lifts it up and, and holds it out, and she goes, "No." I go, "What's wrong?" And she goes, "This is not what I ordered." I go, "Yeah, you ordered a passion fruit margarita." And she goes, "No, I want a frozen margarita." I go, okay, well, we can do like a regular frozen margarita with a passion fruit ad, but that's going to cost more. And she goes, no, I want the one, this one. And she keeps pointing the menu. And I go, that's the one I brought you. That one, it says right here, it's on the rocks. And she's like, boy, you are wrong. This is not, I want a frozen margarita. And I was like, all right. So I do a um, regular margarita with passion fruit ad, bring it out, drop it at the table. And she goes, I just the second I turn to walk away. She goes, what is this? I go, this passion fruit margarita frozen that you ordered. And she goes, no, it is not. And her husband goes, bring her the right drink. And I look at him like, motherfucker, I'll kill you. I will legitimately kill you. And her, her children, uh, both immaculately dressed, European children. This guy, Adam, pointed this out one time when we were going through all that. He was like, what's up with rich Europeans? Their kids are dressed like fucking successful CEOs. And you know the like, you, you know the father and and any of the boy children are also wearing uh like very like very briefy briefs underneath oh, those dude. clothes. I think those little boys had banana hammocks on and they were yeah. under eight years old. Yeah. But <laughs> the woman the woman's like, This is not what I ordered. And then the guy's like, Bring her what she ordered. And I'm like, dude, I'm I've talked.
talk to you guys twice about this is this is what we do and finally she goes bring me what i ordered and the manager comes over and he's like what's going on i was like she ordered a passion fruit margarita and he's like get her what she wants because it was starting to fill up because it was turning four to five so like new waiters are coming in it's kind of getting intense he's like just get her what she wants and she goes that's right i forgot what exactly what she said she said something fucked up like bring me that bring it faster to me boy and i was like oh oh okay and i went over and i fucking ordered it in did the passion fruit ad i fucking went into the hutch this is after a hot fucking cafe day i went in the hutch put my hand down my pants and with my fucking index just got it in hit the wall pushed through pulled it out like surgery hands walked <laughs> walked over to the bar you want to of the gross yeah dude grabbed the passion fruit margarita and swirled my finger in the fucking uh in the margarita you should have the, maybe also given it a nice rim ride if if in hindsight being 2020 jay i appreciate it she ordered salt so i couldn't uh, i couldn't knock the salt off it was already you know salt what, Dan? fucking good for you and let that be a reminder to people that even though you're not supposed to fuck with their food you can oh do not all the like, power you need to be respectful this is one of the only i worked at that restaurant for five years this is one of only three instances that i've ever had that and I've, I've waited on some fucking monsters and i did that and i took it out to her and i was getting put in the weeds i was getting sat while all this is happening and I remember I went to Hutch 2 outside on the cafe, and I turned around, and I enjoyed watching her drink it. Because she was like, she, just, on. she was like, Ooh, and I was like, yeah, you fucking bitch. Dude, Eat I my hope, shit. I was hoping she would look up at you and go, she goes, I love a butthole in my margaritas. She goes, I, you do not think I don't know what the inside of an American asshole tastes like? <laughs> Part of her order is to complain so much that eventually someone puts an asshole. She goes, and I didn't even have to pay for it. He goes, Margarita, I promise you, they, they're going to do something to your food. She goes, I'm counting on it. <laughs> Boy. Boy. Um, yeah, that was the only time, though, that I, you know, really did. Every time else I fucked someone's food, it was like I would put extra, like, pepper in their shit. Or I would do something. You know what I mean? I would just do something that would make it off. Would make the dish, like, a little off. We uh, we have our guest coming on here. So we should take a break. We have our guest coming on soon. And we... uh. We can bring him right into the conversation because we still have the rest of the crew. Oh, yeah, uh, like Spite story, it's great. Just like something or revenge. What's the most vengeful thing ever? Oh yeah, I, I'm I, sure I would... we all think of some more as we keep going. B Rod's Canadian, so she might not have any. She may have yeah, just openly any apologize if, if you're mean to them. They go, "I'm sorry you feel that way." She like she like stole a bike and then like put pegs and a blue basket on it and gave it back goes, oh and i i i re i re i degreased your chain it was catching <laughs> for a while hey i did a good job i fixed it up for you also you didn't, you, it, know, you didn't have it for one day and that's payback you don't do the thing you did to me or you're you gonna lose your bike for a day also you silly cat you never had this registered <laughs> so i went and registered your bike for you bud hey bud, hey, bud. I registered your bike hey i registered your bike bud it wasn't in the city I put some new decals on it. If you don't like them, I could change them. Oh, I put a super convenient chip on it in case you lose it. You know where it goes. Okay, bye, friend. Think, B Rod. I say there's an outside shot that you've done something vengeful in your life. Black Lou, certainly. Uh, he had a bunch of fucking bad dad angst growing up. Dude, I want to know. Jacob and know. Jacob has done something. I mean, he did something to Reggie. Dude, definitely Jacob, something to Reggie. I bet Jacob put drugs in his food to make him crazy. He's super villain. Dude. <laughs> he got him addicted. <laughs> so, yeah. was, so what I did was I changed his vitamins. Yes. And smack. He goes, hey, Reggie, I turned you from being addicted to making me feel like shit to getting addicted to that sweet junk. I'm in your head. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Um. So let's take a break and we'll come back with our guest, Sam Evans. Yeah, Thanks. dude, Sam, really funny dude. Uh, great young comic. More people should know about Sam Evans. Uh, Got an I'm album excited. coming out. I'm excited to meet him, man. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody. It's the bonfire. I like. It. Yeah, yeah. I had a I had a live in girlfriend, and I I stole most. Didn't steal, but, you know. It's that gray area, but yeah. ended up with just most of her DVD collection when I moved out. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Was that a back when DVDs mattered? You know. Yeah. Was this like an inside man job where you were like taking it slowly, and then like she didn't realize you were stealing it, or was it when you were moving out you pulled all the DVDs? It was moving out, pulled out. It was like a, I'm gonna leave. You have some some time. Get what you need. And they were all like intermingled anyway. And it was like, oh well, who knows? I, I'm pretty yeah. sure all of these are mine. 
Yeah. Dude, that's how you know if a movie's good. If it's worth stealing from your girlfriend as you move out. <laughs> oh. Binge, though, it doesn't matter. You're just like, Con Air, hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The shitty movies I took, you know? Yeah, I, that's yeah. how spiteful it was. Disc, <laughs> disc 2, Season 3 of Cheers. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that's going in there. For its former child actor, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you just taking one. Yeah, Dickie Roberts. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking taking Dickie Roberts with me. <laughs> never watched it i'll give it a whirl i can't imagine the spite now jay you've lived with women i think i'm the only one jacob and i and dj lou are the only three that have never lived with a woman i imagine breaking up with a woman you live with and moving out really gives way to you doing some spiteful shit um when i moved out uh from carl's no i didn't do anything spiteful because i felt like a fucking dick anyway you know what i mean yeah i gotta do anything special there uh now when uh, cheryl like left kind of unceremoniously so there was no time for like spite and uh no and i've never and i gotta say like genuinely, genuinely i've never done anything like to christy i don't think like anything that's like been like this little fucker anything i would do to her toothbrush i'm like well i'm gonna kiss her mouth eventually so i don't want to fucking yeah. <laughs> tylex fucking being sent to me secondhand or if she gets sick, I gotta take care of her. <laughs> so I've never dicked with food. I've never so no, nah, Christine, I've never done anything like that too. Uh like a like a fuck you, she doesn't know, but it ha ha ha. You just licked my butt. <laughs> I kind of fucking move. Because even Sam bringing that up makes me think if I were to like be asked to move out, like did she ask you to move out? Was she like, grab your stuff, have a moment with the cat, and then Yeah, yeah. Really? It was what, those conversations? Yeah, I was asked to move out. And I was like, no, this is, I'm not, I'm not planting a flag or anything. I'm ready to fucking go. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, you know what? Hey, bud, I'm cool. That's like getting fired from a job that you're like, dude, honestly, didn't even care the last three months. So peace out. <laughs> well, you you know got me. <laughs> yeah. You know what it is, too? The gross things to a girlfriend, like someone you're living with, even if you're having like a fight or something like that, the gross things to them, like in my mind, wouldn't like blow their fucking mind like i definitely wouldn't want to eat soup that christine spit in yeah. but if like i found out later that i'd eaten soup that christine spit in, i wouldn't be like retroactively like i can't believe you uh, i can't uh. you know what i mean and legitimately from just the foul nature of fucking I, christine fingered her butt and put it like you know rubbed her finger in my bread or my sandwich barring seeing shit i would just eat the sandwich <laughs> i'm like i've licked her ass what difference does it make there's a threshold you've crossed and it doesn't matter it yeah doesn't it doesn't matter. really matter. that's just that's not that fucking there's no coming you know, back yeah if, plus yeah. if you don't get angry you're denying them the satisfaction of that spite that's move. Very good. Like, you know what it doesn't and, matter and yeah. anyone that's dated a comedian for more than six months knows you don't have to put your finger in your butt and touch something that we're going to touch that's going to make us laugh just tell us <laughs> we're not funny uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you peed on my sandwich i just wouldn't eat it because of wet bread it wouldn't necessarily yeah. be the pee. <laughs> yeah like if she was like like i would almost just think that was it would almost make me want to get back together with her if i found out she did something like that <laughs> or she Damn, goes you fucking, you're gangster and she goes i actually she goes i pissed all of your socks and i go what are you doing friday you want to see if we can make this work <laughs> christine have you ever vengeful acted me no because i'm like what could i eventually act on you you know what i mean um jacob I yeah, jacob i don't know I don't think you just my like, I'm not saying me and Jay have definitely like crossed each other's boundaries over the years, but it's like I haven't really like done anything to you like as a fuck you to you or to like try to get back at you for something. I'm talking about like the most minimal. Thing. That's what I'm saying. More, I was like, most, exactly. It's like, like yeah, and anything like that. Like the worst thing I've probably like dropped something on the floor and then served it to you without your knowledge. Oh, you fuck! That's the worst thing I've ever heard. That's I would have rather you fucking. Uh, <laughs> that's not out of state. That's well, just because pillow. I'm like, stop being such a baby. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I'm, a, I'm a baby because I don't eat floor food. <laughs> <laughs> it's a three second. <laughs> oh, she's right this yeah. Wow. I don't eat floor food. Wow. I'm not a dog. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dude, honestly, uh, this is my first experience, Sam, living with a girlfriend has been this quarantine. And I feel like I'm so sensitive that small stuff that isn't spiteful, I'm taking as spiteful. Like I'll be playing video games and she'll walk across the screen and I'll be like, are you are you mad at me is something going on she's like no i had to go to the bathroom i'm like i just felt like you walked through during that play and you i will give christine on the screen cross i will give christine the actual problem she just caused if it causes a problem 
<laughs> I'm like, well, you walked by and I got flash knocked out. Great. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Try you. to be <laughs> respectful of the cross. Yeah. Now, so, but then also, I feel there's passive aggressiveness when she walks and <laughs> stands like she's getting ready to, to run across, like waiting for me to give the go. And she doesn't say, can I cross? She just stands there. And I'm like, I see her stand there for like a weird amount of time. You go, go. <laughs> like, no. like, I feel like everyone should give you a wide receiver check, like at the line when they look and they go, "Am I good to go over?" And you're like, "You're good to go." Yeah. Go. <laughs> so now, do you now you and Carmen? How long have you guys lived together before the quarantine? You know what? It was that thing where I was renting an apartment that I just wasn't living in for like four years. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we finally shacked up a month before this, and it could not have been better timing. It fucking saved my ass. Yeah, it's just super cheap. It's great. So yeah, yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty solid uh, with the situation now. Because yeah. you know that's like the the positive story of the quarantine, and so is mine. Like you know, I'm living yeah. in a story. I live in a story with Becky Own, and then Katie lives by herself. And and it was like, oh, cool. Well, I can I can move in here during the quarantine, and then uh, Katie Hannigan can move into our apartment, so they have their own place. So it worked out. But the people I think about are the people that are at that stage where like that spiteful shit starts happening, and then you're locked into a quarantine, and you don't have any money to do anything. Yeah. And then it's just like being, dude, that would be hellacious, just being okay. locked in locked into an apartment with someone that you're like, fuck you <laughs> they're like well guess what buddy you got me all fucking quarantine everybody in this uh chat has in-house quarantine puss or dick rather congratulations guys well except i mean jacob's at his Jake. no jacob's got a what do you mean jacob he's got has his mommy jacob fucks dolls so he has a harem choose to have my mommy christine i'm here Jacob's fucking those, he's fucking those dolls. Yeah, Jacob, show Sam, show Sam your harem that you're that you're <laughs> did just you say, up. Jacob, did you say you're there taking care of your parents? Yeah, they're yeah, like, I mean, I'm looking after them. I do they a lot. Bring they bring you food to your door. <laughs> like she makes you lunch and then she also makes you dinner, right? She's taking care of you. <laughs> no, 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 I make my own. <laughs> it's healthy for them. Is too. that how you see it, Jacob? You see it as you're there to take care of them. Dude, that's what Bobby is. You're living, living in their house being fed by them. <laughs> you know, self -reli I'm very self reliant. Are you pea nonsense. soup? Are you pea soup in your favorite cup cup? I actually miss making my own food. What can oh, I do? Here? Dude, that sounds so Dinner. funny. I'm so tortured. Yeah, I have could... to eat delicious food. What and can you do? What... Delicious. what can you do, Jacob? You could do what you're saying and cook for them every day and take care of them. I do cook for them. I cook for them a lot. I Pick up their mortgage them. payment. These are taking care of people things. <laughs> Not just being there. You think you're keeping them alive by serving you? It gives them purpose. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, no, trust me. When they have, it's the carrot in front of the donkey. I keep these people alive. <laughs> goes, they would have died from boredom during this if I wasn't here to make silly messes for her to clean up. I'm down <laughs> in here. I'm down in here blowing loads in these dolls, getting fucking fresh pea soup. <laughs> I tell her, I say, Mom, listen, would it kill you to just? Wash my unmentionables in the sink, you know. I just like a little hand washing on them. Yeah. He goes, Can I go back to bath to sink baths like when I was a baby? <laughs> Can you clean my binky and my doodle? <laughs> yeah. I don't have to justify me being down here, do you? <laughs> Jacob, we know you, you led with you led with a defense by saying something outrageous that you're there to take care of them. You're there to run away from the city and coronavirus and be served that, food by two elderly it, people. It it served my purpose also because I'd be alone in my apartment for months now, and I I do think it's better for me. Yeah, you would have had the saddest situation. Or huh? think of this. Could you imagine if they didn't have the benefit of you down there wailing creeping death on a drum kit in their garage? I mean, they could they're not have that humble. happening. They're quiet. It's a quiet kit. Oh, so but I have heard sound. I have heard old Metallica keeps COVID away from the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> as COVID, that's your lamb's blood on your door. As as COVID goes by, it goes, old people can't live in there. They're rocking hardcore Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> your mom and dad have a mosh pit while you play. <laughs> dude, it keeps them from getting blood clots. Dude, his mom's starting a pit with his dad, just pushing, just being like, all right, what's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <people. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Creeping down. Oh, yeah, here it goes. Bar, 
I was born a dude. That's fucking great. Um, dude, hey, hate. I'm rocking I'm your hate. I'm the one. You've been rocking out for them? No, I say I'm not going to stop rocking out for them. Yeah. Dude. Oh, oh, I thought you said you were rocking out for them. Like I, I was like, dude, you make your parents come out there and go. <laughs> it's wonderful, Jacob. It's one. I like it. You hit the symbol and then you hit the tom toms and you're going with a beast, the boom and the bing and the bang. And it kill, would it absolutely kill you to learn fight fire with fire? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe master of puppets. A lot. You can move on from creeping death. <laughs> Throw it down on a four four time and maybe do if I was a rich man. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that is uh Have you, Sam? Have you done any comedy shows on Zoom? A couple that it's you know it's a poor sub. It's it's the less than methadone to comedy yeah. heroin. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. I feel strung out and trying to stay awake. The, when I do. Is it the it's the kratom the heroin? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I get that, man, because we do this radio show almost, you know, we do it four days a week, and it feels weird with, like, all of us in different places and not usually in the same room, because as you can tell, like, our show is just us sitting around bullshitting about whatever is going on in our lives, so it's weird to, like, do a video conference, so when people ask me to do Zoom stand-up, I'm like, there's absolutely no way that's going to work. There's yeah. no way I'm going to feel good about it. Yeah, yeah, you don't. It's just a poor, I don't know, it's like... It feels like medicine that you would rather vomit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's You're like, can I just throw up and have the shits instead of drinking this <laughs> gross, gross thing? <laughs> Your album's out now, and I feel like mm -hmm. it's with people that release shit during the quarantine. It's like a double-edged sword of, well, it's cool you get to put something out, and you know people are going to be around to enjoy it. The shitty part is the benefits of putting out an album would be being on a bunch of shows mm -hmm. to promote the album. And yeah. getting like stage time and shit yeah kind of got to be like a thing where you're like man fuck this but then also everyone can go download your album and listen to it yes and i feel i'm happy about that you know what i mean but it is like it's like you got a lot of energy and there's nowhere to put it and everybody's like come do my zoom show and you're like <laughs> yeah and if you say no there's there's certain people that think you're like what are you not are you above comedy you're like it's not even comedy you're not doing yeah. comedy you're doing a video conference Dude, yeah. Speaking of the quarantine, like, did you see, like, Norman's got a million, a million views already. Yeah, he's got a million on his special on, wow. on YouTube. And also, he did that great, I tweeted it out, Norman's Land. He, like, went with a film crew and went around Manhattan and filmed like he was the only guy left. <laughs> like, really? He his, yeah, he, like, clipped his toenails at St. Patrick's Cathedral. He, like, <laughs> took a bath in the pond at Central Park. And he did, he did basically like a last man on earth, but it's called Norman's land. It's fucking great. And it's one of those things where I think we can all agree. Zoom standup shows suck, but then you see someone like that make something that's like high quality in the quarantine. And you're like, Hey, stop. We're not all going to make high quality shit. Everything you see us do is going to be through a zoom camera. And then Norman's like, Hey, I got a film crew. They followed me. Yeah. It's so well done. Unfortunately, I'll never make it to world star. Cause he's not ripping not breaking down to Kosh six, nine situation. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta break down Takashi. Maybe that's what you are. Sam, Sam Evans is the Takashi six, nine of the quarantine. You put out an <laughs> album. You have to change locations. Oh, Nobody dude, start, can know where I am. Start, yeah. uh, start fake flossing like little Tay. Dude, you like really should. Tay, you gotta go out there. The little Asian girl, you just go ball. Goes, I make money, motherfucker. I'm rich, bitch. Dude, yes, yeah, Sam. That's that's our advice for you to for how to promote an album in the time of quarantine on Instagram. Just start stunting. Just make fake stacks of cash. Talk into it like it's a phone. Yeah. Do a multi die job face tats. Yeah. The whole works. Dude, get it. Go, yeah, go face big. tat. Yeah. <laughs> If there's ever a time that would excuse a face tat, it's right now, right? I think, I think an above, I think an above eyebrow or a nice straight across under left eye, maybe. And you could even do baby boy. You could do baby boy, and then you're like, yeah, my album Sweet Baby Boy's out, and you're like, that's why I got the baby boy done. And people would almost, I feel like when we came back, we'd be like, oh man, that's I, I get it. There's probably lasers that can take it off. But you should spell yeah. boy B O I. Make it really contemporary so it'll eventually be. You have mm -hmm. to explain that that was a time people were spelling it like that. Yeah. That's also like a creepy, and it's like, it's like too cute that if I end up in prison with that tattoo, people are like, I don't, I don't trust what's going to happen. It's too. Yeah. Cute. yeah your mouth, yeah. your mouth's going to be sore. 
Dude, for sure. If you go in a baby boy, you're a first round draft pick. In yeah, the, in I the mean, they're, you know, they're, they're not. They're really going to come to you first because they're not expecting much of a fight. They think a part of you is like, yeah, he's into it, so let me just tell him he's doing it to me. It honestly is. The, it, <laughs> you give some pushback, and you're like, why do you think that's what I'm looking for? Let's not have this conversation. <laughs> I don't want to make this awkward. Let's not do this. You clearly came in marked in a certain way. Yeah, if you went in with baby boy under your eyes. It's the reverse of when you get a prison tat in prison. Like when you get tattooed in prison and you're like, hey, the shamrock, it's for the Aryan nation. And then you're out on the outside and everyone's like, I think he's got an Aryan nation tattoo. <laughs> you would have like, yeah, this is funny. It's for quarantine. And then in prison, they're like, that's I'm going to fuck you tattoo. Dude, dude I, I still I, I want to make sure we get to oh, we have time to make sure we get to everybody's uh, vengeance stories. But what you just said, there was a thing on World Star today. Did you see this black loot? Check World Star today. Come on, dude. You can't have the fist pick and not check World Star every day, dude. You got to choose a life. Choose that's a how life you like. What, you think that's how Black Lou charges his batteries? Is he like yeah. checks World Star while picking his hair? Yes, that's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the whole. That's all it is. That's your only responsibilities as a black man in today's world. Fist pick your hair and watch World Star. Um, no, there's a black dude who has swastika tattoo and a picture of Hitler. Real tattoos, dude, and his explanation for it is I, I, no other word other than buffoonish. His description of why he had, he's not saying he's, it's just so stupid. If you could Man, find it, it was from I, today, I believe. If it's, you want to talk about the thing that will cause a triple take, is a black guy with a fucking swastika. You got to like like peek in on it, too. You have to be like, is that a, I got to get up on this guy. Is that yeah. a crucifix? Hey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, that's a fucking swastika. <laughs> Dude, uh, is that an Iron Cross? Dude, tattoos, <laughs> tattoos on black people are an up close art because I'm telling you, you get, uh, dude, if you were a uh, fucking fifty, a hundred feet away from Tupac, you could be told he has no tattoos. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, well, dude, it blends that, in so much. That's why white trash. When white trash guys get tattoos and they get dark black and they get like a lot of it, you can just pasty on pasty skin is the <laughs> ugliest thing ever. <laughs> on, on a nice freckle white layer, oh, 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 oh buddy. For for what the black skin lacks in distance shot of a tattoo, the white trash pasty dark tattoo makes up for him looking way worse dude. so it, it looks like when you turn up the contrast on an old game boy you know you're like yeah, it's yeah. very <laughs> jarring <right? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. these lines are harsh these are harsh <laughs> fucking lines i like seeing a nice green like a like a like a uh, light green tattoo on a white guy because you're almost like what what are you going for there bud it's that, that, that doesn't those colors don't go together. You got to oh get Oh, my dark. God. It looks like it's just a birthmark on someone that white. <laughs> yeah. Like you have green like moles. <laughs> like, you're so Irish, you have green moles. Or you are or you have jaundice, and your skin is fucking... Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, turning. Yeah, you <laughs> is your skin dying? Like, yeah, it is. But it's I, I, for me. Dude, if I, a black dude with a swastika has to be, for anyone that sees it, you know... You anyone, I was about to say out of context, but I was like, dude, just anyone that sees it, you're like, what the fuck? Did you find Did it? You find it, Christine? Can't hear you. Oh, okay. Loading? No, she didn't look. She didn't look. No, I got... had world. I had world. Start <laughs> she loading. forgot to look. I didn't look at the thing. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> she was. Did you get it up? She's like, it's loading. So really, like, <laughs> really? And while you're typing in what we're asking you to look up, just say you forgot. Say um, I uh, forgot. You... I pulled up World Star and I forgot what I was looking for. This Same is Christine's vengeance. This is Christine's vengeance move. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is her sandwich off the floor for you. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! I hope it hasn't been like a sandwich or a wrap. But it really. Sam, do we? I've noticed doing the radio show on Zoom when you try to talk to the producers, it's like you're trying to talk to your teenage kid that's on an uh, online, and you're like, "Hey, did you get that?" And they're like, "Yeah, hold on, <laughs> pay attention." Yeah, listen to me. You have to fucking listen to me. Yeah, dude. I uh, damn, dude. It just hit me. I'm sorry to interrupt. It really just hit me right now. We, there's just been several times in me and Christine's uh, relationship of having dinner where I've pulled a couple hairs out of a meal and she goes oh it must have happened from a thing and now i'm realizing she just feed me floor food constantly <laughs> Dude, you didn't know that that's just because oh, i shed that was my oh favorite my Those god issues. jesus christ jay you realize christine there's a christine there's a nickel and a paper clip in my pasta hmm? 
<laughs> oh, I must. Uh, I think it fell out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, why is there a uh, why is there a coat check ticket? <laughs> <laughs> coat check ticket. Uh, weed, know. little weed flakes, and. Uh, <laughs> hey, when did you park at the Radisson? <laughs> the valet slip. <laughs> Cat, I don't know. I don't know. Check for the W. Where do we go to the W? All right, I want to hear this uh, black dude explain yeah. his swastika tattoo. Go Dodgers. Adolf. Adolf Hitler. We are the KKK. We are agents for white supremacy. The Bloods and the Crips killed way more niggas than the KKK did. I got a gun right now in California. I ain't looking for no white boys. I'm looking for niggas out here. Looking for my own homies out here. That's who the fuck I got a gun for. What? Rappers rap about breaking in houses and shit, making it cool. Then Ahmaud Arbery got killed because they thought he was breaking in the house. They shot Botham Jean. He an accountant. They shot Breonna Taylor. She was an EMT. They not even killing hood niggas. They killing professional black niggas because hood niggas is making it okay. They not aiming for hood niggas. They not worried about them. They went. They aiming for professional black niggas getting killed because rappers making it cool. Huh? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He, I would have understood it more if he just said nothing. I don't know what he said. <laughs> the, the story took a hard left change in the middle that I didn't even really fully understand. It's like, right. we, it's like we killing each other. They shot a um a, a, a Ahmad Aubrey or whatever his name. I can't say his name. But like uh they shot him and, yeah, and it's like Brianna and, Taylor and he named all of them, but it, it's weird that he got like like why don't I understand what the what does that mean? What is are you a cop? At the end though, you want to be like you, but you know you're you have a Nazi tattoo now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'd be like, you'd be like even take your point is is completely valid and and, and you, you have a a point you're making that that's great. All said and done, you have Adolf Hitler on your forearm. Dan, I'm sorry to take this uh, this slide <laughs> off of what you're saying right here, but two things that I want Christine to look up, and I, I don't want her to forget, so I'm going to say it to her now. Two, they're very important. One, look up if any girl or guy has ever got a tattoo where they made their pubes Hitler's mustache. It must have been <laughs> somewhere. And two, <laughs> Dan, have you ever seen – Christine just showed us the other day, and we still haven't brought it up. There's just a website that called Cats That Look Like Hitler. <laughs> There's Hitler. It's so funny. There's yeah. So many cats that look like I mean crazy what? how much they look like Hitler. Like you yeah. know the you know you know the Ari Shafir cat. Yeah, that looks that, exactly that, like that, Ari. That uncanny. Wait, hang on. I'll find the other thing, but I have that. Ari Shafir here. cat too, because I mean, dude, that's crazy. There's all these cats out here looking like fucking Yeah. It's like all those tuxedo cats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, that's well, you got to go. There's some crazy. Yeah, they were like the hair, like the hair part. It looks like. We'll tweet these out at the bonfire SXM. By the way, that one's name was. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a part in the hair. That's <laughs> crazy. I, I was wondering why the sandbox is not empty all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Christine, Google image it also because you will pull up one at one point that was like, fucking you crazy. You looking. Google image Kittlers and it's <laughs> like they're called Kittlers? Yeah, they're called <laughs> yeah, dude, here's the killers. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, <laughs> that one top right is so oh good on this foot. How can you own a Hitler cat? <laughs> they make one with the band. I have a question for the group. Who we go back? There's one where a cat has a tiny Nazi armband. Who makes a yeah. cat? Who's the brilliant owner that did that? Some of these Holy are probably shit. not owned by great people. <laughs> oh my! I mean, it's not the cat's fault, and it's just crazy how much they look like Hitler. That's <laughs> so weird with the black it's little baby Hitler, Hitler. But yeah, I mean, it's a thing. Hitlers. Go to the one up top. This guy here. Look at this prince. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your cat just looks like Hitler. I mean, that is on the nose. The mustache is perfect. God, Can you so imagine like going to foster a cat and being like, yes, I'm a hero. I'm going to foster a cat. Yeah, yeah. Buy it. <laughs> and it's just a Hitler cat. Uh, dude, by, give, by the way, you got to give back a Hitler cat. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, you don't, even, you don't even notice it. You just have friends over and then someone goes, hey, Mark, has anyone ever told you 
Your cat looks like Hitler. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, now I can't unsee it. <laughs> oh, you're like, oh, god damn it. Buttons does look like the one of the world's worst people. Uh, they send you another one. It looks like Edie Amin. So. Yeah. You go, dude, I, you go, I didn't think a dog could look like Joseph Stalin. And yet, here we are. I got a gerbil. I got a gerbil that is a carbon copy Mussolini. <laughs> dude, honestly, I'm putting them together in my access of pets. <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta fucking, my axis of pets you just have a japanese yeah dude that's so fucking funny that one where he's frowning that all the way to the right where he's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, do you, what do you think our purpose is here <laughs> the reason you don't have money is the jews yeah he goes i mean dude you're putting your cat like that yikes yeah. Because some of them look like Hitler, but some of them also look like they're preparing for the role of Hitler. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Oh, my God. You guys don't know that's famed French cat actor, <laughs> Jean, Jean Le Scratch. My arbeit, when ya uh, <laughs> nobody done a thing like, shouldn't when they went into the office, I know I watched this movie again the other day, uh, some of it, but American History X, when he comes back and goes to the party, yeah, Stacy Keach's house and goes and was like, wouldn't it be funny if just like in Stacy Keach's office he just had two Hitler cats walk around? He would have just been, I mean, there's enough ridiculous in that movie they could have fucking thrown that in there. <laughs> Honestly, Jay, I would I would say one Hitler cat I don't even bat an eye at. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One Hitler cat. For, one Hitler cat in that guy's office is more believable than uh, out of shape white supremacist beating black people in a full court basketball game. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more, it's more realistic than little Edward Norton in reverse jamming at <laughs> beating the king and duck. Yeah, him putting the game away with a with a fucking reverse dunk. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that is so funny to think. He like, picked that up before it became racist. <laughs> like, yeah. He's hanging off the thing. Yeah. Pick, this, pick that thing. Pick that bitch up before it became racist. Because you know the two. Playing <laughs> <laughs> with fat Ethan Embry in that, like yeah, Ethan Embry. I, I was he playing or was he filming? No, he was playing. He was playing. Yeah, he was yeah. filming. He was always filming shit, but I think in that game he was playing. What's yeah. What's uh, funny to think about that is how big of an idiotic white supremacist you have to be to look up adopting a Hitler cat. Where you're like, I gotta get one. I need <laughs> one with the thing. And then you're like, you don't fucking think that's a little much? I mean, you know, besides that, the racism's a lot. But also, zeroing in on a cat for your racism, where you're like, oh, dude, gotta get one. Gotta get a Hitler cat. I'd do it if I could, like, name a Moses or something. You know what I mean? Like something, like name, <laughs> name the cat Passover. Oh, name of Mordecai or like something. <laughs> Yom Kippur. Ruben. Yeah. Oh, dude, Yom, Ki Yom Kippur would be so great. You go, that's high, ho that's high holiday. You know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, cat, Yom Kippur. He goes, your cat. Well, it looks like Hitler. And you just go, no, I know. It's adorable, right? And he goes, <laughs> it looks like Hitler. He goes, Are, oh, yeah. I, can't, I mean, if, if you see things like that. Dude, that's so funny. You're on your couch. You're like, hey, hey, Ashkenazi. Get down. Ashkenazi, <laughs> get down. <laughs> then you go, that's my kit in Israel. Yeah, and then they go, oh, your cat looks like Hitler. And you go, no. You shut your mouth <laughs> Jay, right I, I can't find a Hitler tattoo on a pussy, but I did find this. That's great. <laughs> Holy shit. That's fake, though. I don't know, dude. I mean, it looks great. I mean, it's got to be. Those have to be extensions, but it's very well yeah. done. No, those have to be except pussy hair wouldn't grow like that. Look up the longest pussy hair in the world, and I promise <laughs> you, it's it's a wild it's a wild mane, but it's not going to grow where you could be able to flat iron it and or curl it. Wait, and really quick, if you guys want to see sexy Dan, oh, sexy. you know I do. Yeah, dude, look at that all Kevin <laughs> Soder. Well, yeah, look at that, dude! Look at those are the Spanx. Looks huh? like when you talk, it's like you're gonna talk with Spanx talk too. He's like, you want to get out there and you're gonna give him hell. Can you go? Yup. Yeah. <laughs> Christine, if you look look right under my on the right, my arm under my tattooed arm, right there, the the side of my that's all being held in by Spanx. That was like that was like the thing that was like. <laughs> I can't over it. I was like, yeah, dude, you know what? I think I'm going to use the Spanx for this scene. And they're like, all right. I mean, the filming scenes, we were, we were broad shoulders, dude. though. Look at them broad shoulders, though. Oh, huh? thanks, dude. Gassing me up. I'm, I told you, dude, I have the torso of a toddler now. I've, <laughs> I've just been eating fucking peanut butter and jelly with chips and fucking delicious treats. And then I got caught buying, because I go to the grocery store. I'm the one that goes to the grocery store. I got, pot, I got caught buying Uncrustables. <laughs> really? 
Yeah, because I want. What do you mean, them. caught? Because I because I make enough peanut. She said I make enough peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that you don't need <laughs> uncrustables. But did you let her know that with an uncrustable, you take one bite out of it and then you feed chips into the hole? Oh, that's a pro move. Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. Oh really? Uh, uncrustables is the best way to do chips in a thing. There's no. Uh, it, it's it's in a pocket. Dude, you're yeah. making a you're making a burrito. I'll tell you what. You take a you take a bite out of that some bitch cold, pop it in the old M wave for about ten seconds, then feed in the chip. Then the chips are going to slide in, then let it sit. <laughs> <a second. laughs> you have to be patient. So sexual. It takes patience, Dan. You got to finesse it a little bit. Do, you what, know what, do I mean? what the Mormons call soaking. But you have to soak a little bit <laughs> with your chip. Soak your chips. You got to soak them a little bit. You got to sulk it in there. What was the last thing you wanted to see? The last that world's said. hairiest pussy. <laughs> long, not world's hairiest, world's longest pussy, pussy hair. hair. Yeah. Longest pubes. See. Longest pubes. Puss. Longest pubes in the do world. Think, do you think Guinness tracks it? Or it's yeah. got to be some weird website, yeah. right? No, I bet it's Guinness. Be weird, I, I bet that. Yeah. I bet that that guy who you know that guy Guinness has like all of those. Where he's like, you gotta go look at longest pussy hair, longest <laughs> fingernails, and he's like, I got it. I got do, it. do long do longest pu- longest pubic hair real type that in because there's gonna be a lot of that kind of stuff. I don't want no bullshit now. No merkin subject. This is a serious subject. I still think I'm still blown away by the by the guy that thought social change would come through him tattooing adolf hitler and a nazi symbol on his arm I he can't can't even explain to you what the social change is. he doesn't i, I don't know what, black lou, what his point is black lou uh, uh through all this do you see that as any way of a, a halfway decent solution which part of it just getting a nazi tattoo on you to prove like do you think uh, like did he think other black people were going to be like oh man i never thought about it like that um, <laughs> he wasn't even making sense Black yeah, will pay for it at the next skank fest. You get a tattoo of an eagle holding a Nazi symbol, a swastika. But it all just there's a back piece though. Back piece. You don't have to say. <laughs> I don't want you to, have to look at that. That'd be that'd be cruel and unusual. Dude, but fuck that, man. I, and I'll I'll double down. And if you get Louis Farrakhan on your forearm, uh, it will, it'll fucking balance out. <laughs> yeah, I'll get Martin Luther King on my neck. I've got one here where I don't know if it's real. If it's real, it's crazy. But the way that it's presented, it seems real. And then I have some that's definitely real and fucking crazy. So well, let it rip, Christine. Quit this putting the more- sandwich. Quit putting the sandwich on the floor. That's fake. That's, that's fake. There's, that's definitely fake. Yeah. That's fake. Rachel Feinstein's yeah, never sure. grown her pubes that long. <laughs> 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 I mean, why are they out in front of her like a trunk? It's weird. It looks like it's weird. Uh, now some of, some of those are real. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Real. oh, my. It looks like she still stuck a troll doll up her. Look at that. I like, ah. it, and I like the long ones get sparse, so it looks like uh, like ZZ Top beards. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They lose a lot of density <laughs> towards the bottom. Dan it, dan dan ha ha. When you wanna go, girl, you know they're crazy about long pussy hairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is long. Damn, that is long. And yeah, it's dude. weird that she shaves a part of her pussy. Yeah, to play around. This lady's a how problem. itchy. How itchy do you think she would be if she just fucking ran a buzzer over that and just took it all off? No, she probably wouldn't be it. Well, she'll be at you eventually, but I'll tell you what, that's going to be one of the smoothest pussies ever at one point. You know what I mean? When you first take that hair down, that thing is coming off bald. Sure. Especially if you have three blade technology where one blade lifts, <laughs> the other cuts, and the other one comes across to ensure there's no stubble. Dude, this is what Gillette's been working for their entire life. They go, we can take out that pussy hair in one swipe. Mr. Gillette? Yeah. I found her. Mr. Jack, <laughs> she's real. He goes, there's no way. There's no way that my white whale is out there. <laughs> Look at these pictures. That's not real. He goes, it Igor, is. Igor, that's not real. She's in the lobby. <gasps> Oh my God. Dude, that's all. Anytime I see someone with a long beard or long pussy hair like that, I immediately think like, what's it like to shave? What is it just like to take it all off and just to feel fucking like smooth and fucking like Sean Donald shaved his beard. And I was like, immediately texted him. I'm like, how great did it feel? He's like, how oh, great. I miss my beard. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, right away, though, man, if you're a beard person like to get used to that look, I mean, 
trying to think of some famous people who have gone from like long beard to no beard and it really is like you have to get used to them oh do you remember when Selleck took off his mustache and all our moms cried yeah <laughs> crazy it was crazy that was the day that was the day a lot of our mothers cha- have never been the same ever since yeah, dude a lot of hysterectomies were caused because he shaved that mustache you said it honey we're gonna be late night one time and they're just like give you bags and bags you can get, i've catch that i caught that at burger king once too which was nice <laughs> This lady just came in at the end of the night and was a real big asshole in the drive Uh So, I mean, we would just keep shitty chicken aside, like really burnt up, dirty chicken aside. That warms my heart. That were like that. So we put that in her bag. We also uh, don't ever order the pulled chicken sliders from KFC because what we do at the end of the night is we take the old, old, old chicken and we take our bare hands and a fork and we just shred that chicken and put it in bags and then date the bags. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Was that? Are those the sliders? Are those called the? Are the snackers? Were those the snackers? The, the snackers. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, food yeah. poisoning off those. I got horrific <laughs> food poisoning off those. That, yeah, you why. got someone's hand juice all over it, dude. <laughs> yeah. Can I to, to lend itself to what you were saying there a second ago too? I, something I forgot <laughs> in my life. There was a great moment, a real great thing that I forgot about. My ex girlfriend Cheryl, at one point, for at least a few months of our relationship, worked at Burger King. Yeah. And I think while I think while she was living with me. I'm pretty sure because at nighttime, dude, when she worked like till close, she would come home with like four bags and just like a mishmash of like, it's like a BK Big Fish, two oh. chicken sandwiches, two cheeseburgers, two you know whoppers. Like I mean, but like eleven sandwiches, dude. That's I crazy. mean, there's no if uh, I never even thought about it either, man. I'm like I'm gonna eat until I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> but Black Lou, when you were at this KFC and you would have like when would you take the chicken and put it aside if it was like in a regular order and you're like oh look at this weird wing and then you just put it in a fucking side box and then she caught the side box basically she got the side box sometimes uh, <laughs> yeah. at, the of, at the end of when you're supposed to use the grease it's really 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 dark yeah if you don't take it out of the machine and clean the machine and you cook some chicken in it which i did a lot because i was just an asshole yeah we would just put that chicken aside so we know that you know it's missouri so her home is 20 miles away yeah so by the time she gets home we're closed <laughs> we Dude, do. Is, what a walk off what a walk oh, off perfect, home run. perfect crime Ugh, yeah <laughs> the last thing that you guys were talking about is like hearing something and still having sex yeah um, oh yeah yeah we were talking about before sam we said like if you ever have you ever heard something terrible and then gone and had sex immediately like we were wondering what's well, like the wonder thing where it's like your aunt passed and you're like i'm gonna miss her and then you hang up and you're like ah, yeah <laughs> <laughs> mine was a real yeah. Mine was a real gray area because uh, basically I was having sex with this girl. It was 2001. Okay. My mom was calling the house and I could see the caller ID. She was calling over and over and over and over. And I'm like pulling phones out of the wall. I'm, I'm like throwing them under covers in a different room and shit. I know and what like, this is already. <laughs> in, uh, it's a, it's a, it was actually on April Fool's Day 2001 too. So I'm like, Oh, that's hilarious. I thought you were going to say you got just, the second plane has just hit the tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Yo, um, you know I need that morning nut. <laughs> oh, what are we gonna do? We're not first responders. Yeah, yeah. We'll go to war for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, those towel heads are gonna pay. Yeah. 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 Until they glow. Till then, let me bust this nut. <laughs> I know people fucking start That guy's yeah. gonna find the bottom of an ocean. Uh, uh, looks like we're gonna be collapsing some caves. Speaking of which. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're going to shut down the city for this for sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really was pumping faster because I thought she was on her way home. Yeah, okay. So, like, she uh, she stopped calling. We, Me and the girl finished. I was like, all right, you know, we're, we had plans to go to the basketball court. I'm like, dude, I'll meet you at the basketball court. Um, I finally, like, pull the phones back in. I pick it up. And basically, uh, my uncle had been murdered. And I was like what? having sex, kind of like right as well, the whole like family found out that it fall. happened. Yeah, yeah, dude. It was it was a uh, intense situation for a long that's time. So that's so funny like the crush, thought. That's like in Crush Groove when they show uh, Russell Simmons is fucking. Uh, he's fucking Sheila E. While uh, <clears throat> Run DMC is getting beat up or something or some. Yeah. Or someone's having like a good moment and the other person's getting their ass kicked. But also. Lou, the thought that you're at your uncle's funeral and one of your cousins is like, how did you find out? And you go, well, I'm waxing some ass. 
<laughs> <She's lost. laughs> I send her on her way. I send her onto the basketball court. I plug back in the phone. Find out your pops got murdered. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. oh god, yeah, dude. that's fucking crazy. There must have been multiple people. There must have been so many people fucking when the planes hit the buildings in nine eleven. Eight a.m. Yeah, dude. Morning so fucks. Weird time for us. It was six a.m. What day of the week was it? It was a uh, Tuesday. It was a Tuesday, so I mean, I'm sure there are. Yeah, I'm sure just by numbers there are. I mean, in fucking L.A., it's five. So if somebody had a late nighter, you know what I mean. I'm talking about people in New York waking up and fucking, and then a fucking plane hits. Oh, dude! But if you <laughs> live, like, if you live down by Wall Street, you gotta go. Oh. <laughs> you're like, just, oh my God, you're rocking my world! And you're like, yeah. <laughs> This is crazy good sex. Did you feel that? Oh, I felt it. I felt it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She goes, I think it's second plane. And he goes, I'm about to hit again. I'm about to hit again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Second plane. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't. That's fucking traumatic. That is. Uh, <clears throat> Christine. Dude, I, I want to. Jacob's. Who thinks got a better vengeance story, Jacob or Christine? I got to say, I'm having like a hard time. I've done a lot of shitty things in my life, but most of them have not been like vengeful. It's more just been like me, you know, creating my own bad news. Like I, I haven't really acted out of like vengeance. And I also like until you, like I haven't really been in a, you know, like no long-term relationships. Oh. I don't want to be like shitty to people. I'm glad to see you took a, you took the time to find true love in your life so you could feed him floor food. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I honestly I know for us. I know for the next three weeks, Christine, every meal she hands Jay is going to be like, was this on the floor? I'm flipping everything with a fork oh, three okay, times and taking a look. I was going to watch your serve. I go, hey, give me a heads up on your plate and the food. <laughs> <I'm> gonna, <laughs> yeah, I want to watch. Come over and check things out. Why don't you eat the floor food? Yeah, are people are people out in your neighborhood? Because I'm noticing people are out in mine like more and more as yeah. the days grow, especially yeah. as it gets warmer. Yeah, it's yeah. a little. Um, people are gonna fucking go yeah. back, and then, now I'm reading everything. I'm really gonna uh, make sure I stay uh, vigilant with the shit I'm doing because, like, uh, the antibodies thing. It's like the more and more people come back, goes half of the citizens that you have them are wrong. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Did you did you get tested for antibodies, Sam? No, because I don't. I really don't think that we've had it. I don't know. I mean, I know some people don't like show symptoms. But we have been like actually very feeling great physically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Really? And you guys have stayed completely. Have, have you gone around in your neighborhood at all? Have you guys stayed like inside grocery store? That's it. We we do grocery store and like uh, we go on a run maybe like three times a week, and we've started masking up for that, which is fucking terrible. But oh, dude, I hate running to begin with. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. not a fucking chance. I don't. I would. I don't. Would never go for an outdoor run anyway. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Even when I was running for a while, if you remember, Dan, I was running at one point like three, four days a week, but it was all treadmill. Right? There's no fucking how good. How I, good? I, I, I can't take to the streets. Well, it's weird that you say that, Sam, is because I think like even with the mask on, it's healthy. I am. I just started using. My girlfriend has like a small gym in her in her building, and I, I started thinking today i'm like there's no real ventilation in here so it might be worse that i'm working out in this fucking building gym because they tell you they tell you they're like hey uh disinfect everything you touch which i do every time i use it but i'm saying like i'm wondering if it's because it's such a small space and it's inside and, yeah. it, and people and people are on a tread there's a treadmill in there that's why i use it and it's like ah, ah, ah. i don't know who's the hour before me because you have to reserve times there's like a whole system where you have to like Reserve a time. You have to clean it after yourself. Buddy, oh, just do, do sit-ups, push-ups in the house. Dude, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I might. Okay, it, but the running with a mask also sounds fucking terrible. It sucks so hard, man. It's really bad. And I'll pull it down when there's, like, nobody around. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's very Breathe in your own CO2, man. It's nuts. Yeah. Dude, mm -hmm. it's gotta, it, that's got to feel good, though, when you're, like, taking off the mask i think we're going to get to a point with the masks where it's going to be like condoms for everyone where we're going to like look around with who we're with and you're like do, do you want me to use one <laughs> what's you up be bad? you want to be bad yeah there you go yeah, i don't know it's friday night let's get nuts why not and you just take it over your nose and you go <laughs> just take it off and you go all right thanks <laughs> what a 
just naughty I'm, little girl you are. Oh God, you're such um, a bad bitch. Raw dog in the city. Yeah, dude. Um, and and headliner, Jacob, you must have done something. I'm, no, I'm like Christine. I'm drawing a, a blank. I'm sorry, dude. It no was way. only one time I wish I had, but I this girl was horrible to me. But. All right, well, let's do, let's do a little fantasy flight. Women, it was, yeah. it's actually been pretty cool, but aside from one, but I didn't do any. Well, you know what, Jacob? Lay it, out, lay it out, and Jay, Sam, and I will go through of how we would revenge spite this girl. No, I'm not I'm not getting into that one. <laughs> she was just nasty. Dude, well, you got to tell us how. We've all told all of our... We're, just no, peed on someone's clothes. I told you I stuck my finger in my ass and swirled a, a margarita with it. You can oh, say I mean, what this shit about this show, Jacob. Do you give a shit about this show? Or are you stuck down what? there being Prince Patat? <laughs> family? <laughs> the restaurants, now I am thinking I did the only time... Um, well, get, well, you said it when... You cannot be shitty to a waiter or waitress. No. Because, I mean, even if they're the nicest person and they'll never, ever even think about doing it, that one day you caught them on a bad day. Dude, this is Jacob's, falling, this, this is Jacob's falling down speech. <laughs> he goes, uh, <laughs> I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> well, I mean, I worked with guys that dip their nutsack in. I've told you in, in cappuccino and... That's, by the way, Put very all dangerous. Hairs in the food on purpose. Jacob, I'm going to press you on the live show today. Tell us what this girl did to you, because now I want to no, know. No, I'm not so... going to even... Dude, how is she this bad? Really oh, come on, we've built trust. I'm remind Jacob stuff. <laughs> how about when I told you that a girl that I liked who said she liked me, and then her friends said I was too fat, that her brother told me that, like, in front of all my friends. We've all told embarrassing things, dude. Dude, Jacob, I admitted to having fucking streak marks at 36. Yeah, I think I've gone pretty. Uh, done a lot. I mean, I let you both shave me for an almost an hour straight. That meant, that meant nothing. But I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Also, I'm telling you, Jacob. What's why you should just tell us is because now I have the most fantastical ideas of what this girl <laughs> did to you. What did she say? She's going to suck your dick and then just pulled your pants and kicked you out of a bathroom in front of in the school halls. <laughs> ah! it wasn't that bad? I should. I, I regret bringing it up. Not well. Let's let it pay off. What did this woman what did do? She do? We have to go, Jacob. We have to go. Come what on, man. Dude. On that. Come on, man. You have Sam on the show. He's gonna have to leave. This guy's in the I'm middle sorry. of a commercial <laughs> tour. She told Jacob. She told Jacob she thinks it's hot when guys wear girls' panties. And then when he came to school the other day, she goes, "Hey, everyone, this faggot's wearing girls' panties." <laughs> <laughs> and they pants them. Shut up! Stop it! Stop it! Pan- One of my nuts was hanging out of the oh, side. God damn it, Denise! This was a setup. This was <laughs> a setup the whole time. You bitch. She goes, "Ooh, did you wear the panties today?" He goes. Yeah, honestly, I feel silly, but I, I did it for you, you know? And she goes, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Hey, everyone, this Momo's wearing panties. <laughs> and she goes, does it do anything for you? He goes, honestly, feeling against the lace against my skin, it really does. And she goes, <laughs> oh, pulls his pants down. He's like, why would you do that? I, I hate to say it, but I actually think I like it. <laughs> oh, everyone, he's wearing panties and he loves it. Nah. All right. Well, we're going to have to have Sam back on the show so he can hear what this terrible woman did because you're leaving him fucking yeah, high and dry. That's true. That's true. Man, you really blue balled him, dude. Yeah. Good job, good job. You're just going to leave him here with a hard on, are you? <laughs> I'm hard. Uh, yeah. Sam's hard. You're hard, Jacob. What are we even doing here? You guys, I remember you from high school. <laughs> yeah. He's going to leave me here with a hard dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not cool. Not cool at all. Make sure you check out Sam's new album, Sweet Baby Boy. It's out now. You can download it uh, everywhere. You can download comedy you Spotify. You can get a tattooed on your face. Yeah. You can get You can absolutely do that. Follow him on Twitter at Really Sam Evans. Uh, fucking hilarious comic. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Of course, guys. Thanks Great so much. Great hanging with you, man. Great hanging yeah. with you, dude. Thanks. Yeah, we'll have you back on when we're in the studio, and you can actually, you know, we can have, like, uh, one of those conversations. Those are fun. Yeah. <laughs> Love yeah, those. One of them. One of them. Um... Dan, I love you. Make sure you check you, out man. Billions every Sunday night, 9 p.m. on Showtime. And make sure you go to BigJComedy.com and get tickets June 18th through the 20th. Comedy is slowly coming back. Big J is going to be at Helium in Indianapolis, a date that Sam and I were supposed to do in December, but I canceled for SantaCon. So, and, and no, Sam, not to be a part of SantaCon, but to shoot them with water guns. <laughs> they were supposed to rearrange, and then we never got a date. And that's a wild. Uh, it was a wild uh, war. 
uh, that me and Dan fought that night. There's some slow motion video of it somewhere floating around. It's pretty crazy. We it's did a lot of diving really shots. Made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then bullets rain down from everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but make sure again you check out the album "Sweet Baby Boy" Sam Evans, and make sure you follow us at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter and Instagram. We love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow, next week, yeah, tomorrow, next or something like that. Whatever it is, we whatever it is, Aaron. You guys get it. It's the quarantine. Time means nothing. It's a flat circle. It's the